Hi, and welcome to Mother's Quest, a podcast for moms like me ready to live our own truly epic life. I'm Julie Neal, a life and leadership coach, community builder, writer, and mom to two high energy boys who challenge me to grow into my best mom! self. Mom! <laughs> I'll be right there. Where was I? In the months leading up to a big milestone birthday, I decided it was time to stop sidelining my dreams and become the hero of my own journey. I knew I didn't want to do it alone, so I created this podcast to learn from other moms further ahead on their quest, so their words of wisdom and lessons learned could help light the way for mine. I created this podcast for myself, but I hope you'll come along with me and find some treasures of your own. On this episode of Mother's Quest, I had an opportunity to talk with an amazing mother, entrepreneur, TEDx speaker, and blogger named Catherine Winch about bringing authenticity into our lives as women and mothers. Catherine is a nationally recognized expert on the topic of modern motherhood. As the founder and CEO of The Mom Complex, she advises major corporations on what mothers really need in order to create better products and services that make mothers' lives easier. She writes about the highs and lows of motherhood in her blog, In All Honesty. Her TEDx talk titled Unmasking Motherhood uses spoken word to deliver a powerful call to action to mothers and inspired me to let down my own mask, to be vulnerable and honest through the creation of Mother's Quest. In our conversation, Catherine shares how she learned to let go of people-pleasing and mommy guilt and instead got curious, learned to love herself and designed a life that fulfills her. We talk about the power of revealing the truth about motherhood and that it's absolutely okay to not be okay and to not have all the answers. I hope her story will inspire you to let down your own mask and help you step more fully into your own authentic, epic life. I'm Julie Neal, and this is Mother's Quest. So Catherine, welcome to the Mother's Quest podcast. It's so great to have you today and I'm really looking forward to hearing more about your story and your journey as a mom. Great. Thank you for having me, Julie. I wanted to start with uh, actually hearing a little bit about what your childhood was like growing up and the role that your mother played in shaping who you are. Uh, I was blessed to have uh, to grow up in a very loving household um, with both mother and father, very supportive. And, you know, I would say my mother was um, tough, but fair and very loving and um, definitely taught me that you can have a career, but you don't have to be a slave to it. And you can be a good mom at the same time uh, as being a, a good employee. What kind of work did your mother do? Uh, She was a nurse in the Mm -hmm. operating room, which meant that um, I never really got taken to the doctor or the hospital because she would always know that there wasn't something really wrong with me (laughs) when I was trying to get out of school or, um, you know, get away with something. She was like, oh, no, you're fine. You can still move it. That's amazing. I think so much of being a mom is actually worrying about the health of our children. So it sounds like there was a confidence she had as a mom that must have been really helpful. Yeah, very much. And, you know, I have to say, too, about my mom is um, we were and still are very, very close. But, you know, she was never overbearing. She wasn't a helicopter mother. She, you know, very much, um, you know, watched my brother do what we were doing and become who we were becoming and um, definitely didn't, you know, micromanage or, you know, help us pick our friends or what we were doing. Um, And I saw a lot of my friends' mothers doing that, you know, in high school, just kind of hovering and, 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 and being a little overbearing. And I was always very grateful um, that my mom had the the trust and confidence in both my brother and I that, um, you know, we could figure some things out and make some mistakes, but um, that we didn't, you know, need it that, that too much, you know, oversight, yeah, but you have your own life experience and your own experiences of success and failure, it sounds like. And I have followed along with your story through your blog, which I absolutely love. I look forward to getting the latest post every Monday. Your blog is called In All Honesty. But you definitely had a journey in terms of your career and coming back into realizing not not fulfilling what you thought was going to be 
bring you success and happiness, but finding the path that really worked for you. Could you share that story with us? Yeah, absolutely. I was uh, born and raised in the advertising industry, meaning I started working in advertising right after grad school and spent 14 uh, great long years in advertising and loved the people that I worked with and enjoyed the work um, quite often. But it was all consuming for me. And um, I, I learned uh, or I can say now in hindsight that it's where I derived my self-worth and my value was that if I was succeeding at work and winning business and getting to the next rung on the, the corporate ladder, then I felt good about myself. And if I was losing business and not doing well at work, um, it was very devastating to me. And so while um, on the outside, a lot of people um, would look at my career and be impressed by the the titles and the trophies that I was collecting. Um, it just took up too much of my life. And um, I really, at the time, you know, did not spend any time on myself. I didn't spend time with friends. I didn't spend nearly as much time with my family. And, um, you know, after a while, it became not okay that I was living my life that way. I wasn't very healthy. I was probably working 80 hours a week. And um, there started to be this disconnect inside of me. And, and it would happen most frequently when someone would say, you know, you must be so proud of what you're doing at work. It's so neat. And my mouth would say, yay. You know, I would say, yes, I am. But my whole body would say nay. I mean, my insides, my gut, kind of the voice inside of me was um, saying that I felt trapped. I felt overwhelmed. And it very quickly became kind of a, a treadmill to nowhere. I mean, I could see that even when I achieved more success, that it was very fleeting in terms of um, I was only happy about it for four or five days and I was looking for the next, you know, rung on the ladder. And so it finally all, you know, came to a head and I decided that um, I wanted to be an entrepreneur and start my own company and I wanted to be more in control of my self-worth and my self-esteem and uh, my happiness. And that was uh, three years ago. So you had a blog post last week that I was intrigued by, and you talked about an experience that became a spark for you to make the change. I've had that own experience in my life, and I actually think it's a pretty a common element of what I'm calling this epic journey, that there's some kind of a turning point and a call to action. Can you share what that moment was for you that made you finally start to say, no more, I'm going to make a change? Yeah, there's, um, I mean, when I think back, there's there's probably um, a couple, but um, one that jumps out to me is um, several years ago, probably five years ago, I was um, on Christmas vacation, had been home for um, probably two weeks. And at, at that time, I only had to be a mother and a wife because I wasn't working for those two weeks over Christmas break. And uh, my husband, I was making spaghetti dinner. I was getting ready to go back to work. And, and he said, you know, what's wrong? You seem very tense. And I said, you know, I'm just worried about going back to work. And I feel like I have to be a good mother, a good wife and a good employee, and I'm not sure I can do all three well. And he said to me, why don't you just be yourself, Catherine? What is so wrong with being you? Mm. And I said nothing out loud, but a voice inside of me as clear as day said, I don't like me. Mm. And it was instant. It was, what is so wrong with being you? And my response in my head was, I don't like me. And I chose in that moment to get really curious and think to myself, like, wait, I don't like me. Is that real? Mm. <laughs> like, why don't I like myself? Is that normal? Do people not like themselves? And, and that was, there were, like I said, there were several sparks and I've written about a couple one, but a couple of them, but that one was the most profound because I knew it was true. 
and I believed it to be true. And so I made the conscious choice to get very curious about why I didn't like myself. And I started recording and watching every Oprah episode that I could get my hands on. I was drinking lots of red wine. I was reading lots of self-help books, but you know, I, I wanted to get to the bottom of it. And I knew that I had to make some changes in my life in order to kind of rekindle that flame and, and learn to love myself. I think it's so amazing that you were able to tap into curiosity because I know for me, when I could be in a place of curiosity instead of judgment, that's where I can really make powerful changes. And I've seen that happen with other people too. Yeah. Was, and one of the things that I am most proud of of in that journey of like the choice for curiosity was my whole MO for probably the, the previous 20 years of my life was denial. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, you know, had that emotion or those words come to me six months earlier, or a year earlier, I would have dismissed them and I would have thought, um, you know, Oh, well, who said that? Or that's not true. Or how can I not like myself? You know, and just ha 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 and move on. But for the first time in my life, I chose to, you know, really believe it and not sweep it under the rug. And I had become very good at uh, sweeping emotions and feelings under the rug and, you know, practicing the great art of denial. <laughs> yeah, I've had that experience too. I've just, they're like having these like whispers or nudges or feelings that something's not quite white quite right for a while but there's something about just the right moment when you're ready to start to make the change yeah so how did how did this this personal exploration that you're talking about and your path towards entrepreneurship and the creation of your company which is called mom complex how did those come together well, I, um, during my, it was probably a year of kind of exploration and, and learning about myself, you know, I was a, became a voracious reader of self-help books so, to the point that my husband, you know, was always like, why can't you just read trashy romance novels like other women? Why do you have to like be so introspective and, you know, curious about this? But I was serious about it and I wanted to learn more. And what I realized was that in the particular career that I had, which was in advertising, um, it really was um, endless. I mean, it was like you were only as good as your last ad or your last campaign or your last meeting. And I started to feel almost like, uh, you know, an alcoholic in a bar in the sense that that environment was not healthy for me. And I had a very hard time saying no. And I was an incredible people pleaser. And I had it down pat. And I knew what other people people wanted from me and needed from me and I would exceed their expectations every time but I had nothing left for me it was a shell of a human being because I was trying to please and exceed the expectations of you know five or seven different people and um and that was my currency and that's where my self-esteem came from and so I really associated that you know lack of self-worth and self-compassion with the environment that I was in, not necessarily the people because I loved the people, but that industry is very hard. And, um, and so I felt like I would be better being the head of something small. So I was the head of a very, very big team in my previous agency and was responsible for the you know, the jobs of over a hundred different people and it, it wasn't good for me. And um, I came to the conclusion that smaller was better and that if smaller, you know, would allow me to draw more boundaries and say no more frequently and go on more field trips and, you know, actually show up to a friend's house with a present instead of empty handed, um, that, that that would be a better environment for me. And so while I was scared to start my own company, I knew that I couldn't stay in the um, just the environment that I was in before. And can you tell me more about what Mom Complex does and the ways in which you feel um, 
that you're making a difference in the lives of moms through it? Yeah, so um, we act as a strategic consulting company. And um, what's fascinating is that we are very small. So there's five full-time employees. And then we have um, five freelancers or independent contractors. And while our company is very small and helps me sleep very well at night, um, we consult with the largest companies in the world. So Walmart, Johnson & Johnson, Kimberly Clark, the Discovery Channel, uh, Play School, Lego, like big, huge companies. But it doesn't mean that this company has to be big in order to do that. So we work alongside those companies and we help them better understand what it's really like to be a mother, not the June Cleaver version that most um, executives think that mothers live. Mm. And then we help those companies develop better products or services for mothers. So we've helped them develop better television shows, better shopping experiences, better um you know, yogurt products or um, technology driven products. So it's deeply fulfilling because I feel like we are able to impact the lives of mothers um, by getting them more help and better products and services, but we're able to do it through, um, you know, consulting with these big companies. As you're talking about this and beginning to change the way that companies um, present images to moms in a more real way. I'm thinking about the, the way I first learned about you, which is I came across your TED talk called Unmasked Motherhood. And I was just um, really in awe of it. I had, I definitely, it resonated so much with me. And I'm wondering what was the journey that got you to that point of the TED talk? <laughs> Um, it just makes me laugh because I was so terrified giving that talk and like the journey up to it was like sheer horror. Um, I've um, always done a lot of public speaking and, um, you know, part of what I do even as the CEO of the, Mo of the Mom Complex is because I'm studying mothers all day, every day and conducting research around the world with mothers, I've learned so much about the, the trials and tribulations of being a mother. And I got to the point that I felt selfish keeping that information to myself because what I've learned in my research is that every mother feels like she's doing a terrible job. Every mother's wearing a mask and acting like she has it all under control. And I, I just felt like it was my responsibility to share this knowledge because when I learned this knowledge, it really set me free that I didn't have mm -hmm. to be perfect and that that wasn't the goal. And so I wanted to find the most influential stage that I could stand on and, and share that information. So I applied to speak at um, TEDx RVA here in Richmond, Virginia, where I live and was accepted but what was interesting was that a lot of ted talks are 18 minutes long and i got slotted into a six minute talk and wow. i was very disappointed i was my feelings were hurt and i felt like because i was going to talk about moms that they gave me a, a shorter time slot because it wasn't mm -hmm. going to be very interesting <laughs> and so I really took it as a challenge and I was upset about it for a day or two, but then I thought, you know what, I think everything happens for a reason and how can I be incredibly impactful in six minutes and I have this message that I want to share. And um, so I started studying spoken word poetry and found a way mm -hmm. to, to write the speech in a way and my goal was that I not only wanted the content to be memorable, but I wanted the um, delivery mechanism to be memorable as well. So I worked really hard on those six minutes, the hardest six minutes I've ever worked on <laughs> <laughs> um, months leading up to it. Wow. Well, there's a lot of meaning packed into those six minutes, and I encourage anybody listening to our conversation to go and check it out, and I'll have a link and the show notes to it. But it, it really inspired me. And I, around Mother's Day of last year, I ended up writing a post where I included a photo of my little guy, Jake, in hysterical tears. I think it was because at the time he wanted more um, goldfish crackers and I had 
drawn the line. There was no more. And I just felt like those were the kind of photos that we don't typically share with one another. And it was really inspired by um, a photo you actually included in your TED Talk of, of your daughter. Yeah. And I was amazed by the profound responses I got from friends and family, many of whom then posted their own pictures of the moments that are, aren't always perfect with their children. And um, it's really stayed with me that that idea of taking our mask off and revealing the parts of being a mom that are not always so easy, but are still really meaningful and part of how our kids are growing and we're growing. Yeah, I mean, I, I always say that, um, you know, if we hide the hard parts of motherhood, then we rob it of its meaning and of our success. So if we all walk through life and we're like, I got it, I got it. And my husband's really helpful. My children always listen to everything I say. And, you know, we just smile and nod our way through life. I don't think we get the help that we need, but also... Um, you know, other mothers can't see themselves in our story. So, you know, when you posted that picture of your son and I saw it, it was like, wow, thank you. Thank goodness. That's exactly how every day of my life is. <laughs> and I think the more moms open up, then it, it does kind of hit a release valve for other mothers. Um, a blog post I just um, released this morning was... <laughs> Yeah, I just went hiking out in Jackson Hole and I took a picture at the top of this mountain and it, and it looks like a pretty picture and it looks like I'm very, you know, happy and fulfilled, but I was totally and utterly terrified because I like ran into a six foot elk on the way to the top of the mountain and said the picture is not a happy, pretty picture to me. It's the moment that I thought I was going to get eaten by a wild animal. Mm. And, um, but I think when you don't know that backstory and people aren't honest about the backstory, people might look at that picture and say, wow, she's so courageous or, you know, that's such a great picture. But I think it's up to us to tell the truth behind the pictures. Yeah. So, I, I told you this before, but one of the reasons why I'm doing this podcast and why I created Mother's Quest, which officially became an LLC on Friday, Yay. so I'm now officially a business owner, which is not something I imagined I would do in the past, but it feels pretty good. Um, I really want to create an authentic community for moms to share what's really happening in their lives, to go after more meaning in their lives, to be more mindful with their children. I'm wondering from your own experience and from talking about this publicly and encouraging companies to change the conversation, what advice do you have for me and other moms to bring more of this authenticity into our lives? Well, I think, first of all, I, I commend you for what you're doing and um, not only for mothers, but, you know, for yourself and starting an LLC and, you know, it's kind of, it's scary and you're, you're putting your neck out there. And, um, and so I think it's, it's wonderful what you're doing and what I would say, you know, to you and, and other mothers is that I think for better, or for worse, mostly worse, um, you know, motherhood can be a competitive sport and we're always trying to one up each other and to make ourselves feel better. But what I have seen in my research is that when one mother comes out and is honest, it still becomes kind of a competitive sport, but it's to one up each other for everything we're doing wrong, which is just mm -hmm. funny and interesting. And, and I think those conversations have to be had. So I was talking to a mother the other day and I was like, I feel like such a jerk. I forgot to send my son to school, you know, with his lunchbox today. And then she said, you think that's bad? I forgot to pick my daughter up from school last week. And then another mother's like, you think that's bad? And, and it was, it was like honesty begets honesty. And it, but it took one mother of like throwing the rock in the pond yeah. and saying, I made a mistake this morning. But the ripple effect was we all make mistakes and we're all messing this up. But I think it takes, you know, brave people to throw the first rock in and not, you know, fear judgment of that. But I think if there was more of that, that um, mothers would feel less alone and I study mothers all day, every day, and every single one of them feels like they are doing the worst job. Hmm. And that is so heartbreaking because I know it's not true. Yeah. Um, 
but they believe it. And that's a, that's a hard place to mother from when you feel like you're messing it up. It is. And there's, there's this way that the, the other extreme of it though, of thinking that you're just the best mom is also robbing. It's, it, it's just so complex motherhood. Mm-hmm. And it, it seems like you have to be willing to be able to talk and share about both parts I realize yeah. when you're in the midst of something really hard that sometimes you actually have to go through that to get to a better place. Yeah, and I think it's, um, I mean, everybody doesn't need to, you know, completely air all their dirty laundry. And sometimes my husband, you know, gives me a hard time. He's like, I think you're putting a lot of vulnerable stuff out mm. on the internet <laughs> you yeah. know, about, about how you're doing as a mother. And, <laughs> but I'm like, it helps me. It helps every, other people. Like, but I, you know, we all have highs and lows and ups and downs and that's, you know, human nature. But I think to, to keep all that in and hide it, um, you know, it's, that's a painful place to be. And it's, you know, I always say when your insides don't match your outsides, you know, if you feel like you're doing a bad job, I think it's okay to say you're doing a bad job or you feel like you're doing a bad job versus you feel like you're doing a bad job, but on the outside, you're just like happy, happy, joy, joy. And that is a place of deceit and, um, and, and I think creates some friction. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering about uh, as you've been more real and as you've been taking risks, like putting yourself out there for the TED Talk and deciding to become the owner of Mom Complex, what do you think has been the impact of that on your children? What do you think they're learning from watching you live your life this way? Uh, that's a great question. And um, I, I think, you know, my daughter is in the third grade and, and last year she had to do like the, you know, the little cheesy like Mother's Day, like what I love about my mother. And, um, and, and one of the, which I don't even think that she would even pick up on this stuff, but one of the sentence completions said, you know, I'm proud of my mother because dot, dot, dot. And she said, she owns her own company and she's writing a book. And I was like, wow, like for a little girl, you know, in a second grade, whether that's her path or not is, you know, not important, but it was like that she could see that and that she was proud of it. Um, she never would have said that about, you know, my previous life, even though she was younger. Um, and the other thing I'll say is that I, I do travel a, a good amount for my job, and I did in my previous um, career. But when I would leave my children to go on a business trip in my previous career, I was very sad about it. I was bummed about it. And, you know, my daughter was five at the time. And if she said, you know, mommy, I don't want you to go on this trip. My response was, I don't want to go either. Mm. And it was kind of this pity party for me. Like she didn't want me to go. I didn't want to go. I was mad about it. But now, you know, I'm the same human being. She's the same human being. But the other night she said, I don't want you to go away, mommy. And I said, but mommy wants to go away and listen to where I'm going and listen to what I'm doing. And I'm choosing to go on this trip and I'm so happy and it fills me with joy. And it was genuine. Wow. It wasn't, it's like a reverse energy flow that I have control of my life and I'm, I'm controlling when I get on an airplane and when I don't. And I could share that excitement with her instead of kind of sharing in the, and I think that that rubs off on the children, you know, and, um, and I'm very proud of that, that I can, you know, I, I can still travel, but it's, it's not the same energy flow. Yeah, that sounds amazing, and like such a major shift, and I think they do pick up on those things so much in ways that we don't even always realize. Yeah. And they, like I said, I mean, they were younger, you know, in my previous career, but, you know, this Friday I'm going on my son's field trip to the zoo. I never in a million years would have had the courage in my previous career to tell any human being that I was taking off the day to, you know, mm -hmm. go to the zoo. And so um, I'm just more present and accessible and available and happy and calm and, um, you know, I try my best. I'm not perfect at it, but that when I'm with them, I'm with them. And, um, and that 
is, you know, we have one chance to to do this life and, you know, I, I want to go to the zoo sometimes. And um, so I'm excited to be able to finally have the boundaries to be able to go on field trips and have fun with them. Yeah, that, that flexibility of being able to design the life you want according to what your priorities are and to be able to make those choices to be present in your kids' lives. That's something I'm really appreciating about. I was for years a consultant, so I had some of that flexibility then too. And as I'm building Mother's Quest, making sure that I don't ever lose sight of that. Yeah, I, one of the things I um, talk about is how, you know, I, you know, the whole can women have it all. And mm -hmm. I believe that women can have it all, but you first have to know what your own all actually is. That's great. And for me, I spent 14 years in a career collecting everybody else's all. So I had my moms, my dads, my husbands, my bosses, the CEOs, the CFOs, like, I had collected this bag of everybody else's mm -hmm. alls and, and I was very empty and hollow and you know not fulfilled. And so now, you know, being an entrepreneur of a small company and being able to go home at night and see my kids, like that's my all. And now that I have achieved my all, I am much less concerned about what people think about that all. Mm -hmm. You know, so people, a lot of people would say, I took a step back and I left this big advertising career and now I'm a small business owner, but I'm like, this is my all. Like I did the work to figure out what drains me and what fills me up and I've created it. And, um, and I believe that women can do that, but you have to do the hard work and the homework to figure out what your all actually is. I really appreciate hearing this because I struggle with the the term about balance. For some reason, the achieving balance has never landed right with me. Um, but also this notion about whether you can have it all. And I, I think just this idea of defining for yourself what matters most. You, you can have the things that matter most when you're mindful about it. And, it, and you can't always have them in each moment. You have to assess what, what's happening for me this week or even today or even in this moment? What, what's most important right now? Yeah, when I think about balance um, in my previous career versus now, I mean, the balance for me that was off is was effort versus effect. So I was putting in so much effort into this career and this job, but the effect that I had on our clients' business or on the world or on improving people's lives was very minimal. So it was a like tremendous amount of work for, you know, to put some television commercials out into the world yeah. that people would just change the channel. <laughs> and, um, and I felt like I was leaving my two kids at home and that I needed to have a bigger impact on the world. And so now, you know, fast forward three years later and I've created a company where I don't work anywhere near the hours that I used to. So the effort is not as great, but the effect and the impact is enormous and that was the 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 balance that i was looking for um was that i couldn't continue to give so much unless i felt like it was you know really making a difference and now that equation feels really right that sounds amazing what would be your words of wisdom then your most imp important words of wisdom for me or for other moms that are starting on our quest to live the life that sounds like you're living now of really feeling like the effort we're putting in is having an impact that we're fulfilled by our work but that we're present with our kids what would you recommend um one of the things that helped me a lot um one of the self-help books that i um got a lot from is called finding your own north star by martha beck mm, martha. and um it's such a great book and there's a lot of activities in it and one of the activities that anybody can do just in the comfort of their own home is you take out a sheet of notebook paper 
and um, draw a line down the center of the page. And on the left hand side, list out all the things in the past six months that have just drained you and depleted you and you know they just wore you out mm -hmm. and that can be at work at home at the, you know it should be from your life and then on the right hand side all the examples and experiences that filled you with light filled you with joy gave you energy and i actually did that exercise when i was on vacation one time and when I, I just did it kind of top of mind really quick and what revealed itself um, and hopefully, you know, some revelations would come from it from anybody that's listening is that for me, everything on the left on the left side was kind of big and, you know, big meetings, big responsibility, big company, big stress and everything on the right was small, like small moments bite-sized chunks of impact, small teams. And mm -hmm. so in that moment, I could tell in terms of my career that smaller was better and that I didn't need the trappings of success that bigness provided. And so I think it's an activity or exercise that anybody can and should do. Um, and it's very revealing. And I think you have to follow that, whatever it reveals. Um, and you have to, and you can start building a life that leads you more towards the right side of the page. I love that. I'm going to definitely do that. And I can imagine that it seems like it would be important to come back to this kind of exercise more than once as your life continues to change and evolve. Yeah, and just hearing you say that reminded me that another exercise that I learned about was um, that, you know, to write a paragraph phrase of, you know, what your definition of success is in life, not in your career, in life, what does success look like for you? And that was a really hard exercise for me because I had defined my life and my success by my career. So it was almost like me staring at a blank page of like, holy crap, I have no idea what success in life looks like. I only know about it at work. Mm. And so the exercise was first write down one paragraph, your definition of success. And then only after you do that and you get clarity about that, then write down your definition of success in your career. Mm. And it was a wonderful exercise and, and I probably did it like five or six years ago, but I dug it up recently to your point. I was like, I, I can't remember exactly what I said. And, um, and it, what was fascinating to me, I just found it like three days ago, was that, you know, my definition of success in life was little things like writing people thank you notes and showing up to parties not empty handed and calling people on the phone. It was just kind of being a good human being. Yeah. And when I looked at that definition of success, I thought that's not that hard to achieve. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I think I can probably I can do that. Do that. Um, but those are two great exercises that um, really were kind of, you know, plots on my map of, you know, getting to a, a more meaningful place in my life. Those sound fa fabulous. And again, I'll, uh, I'll send, I'll include some links to Martha Beck's book. And then this last exercise, is that something that you found in a particular source? Um, it's actually from um, a woman who I was working with who is a life coach, and her name is Devin Green, okay. and um, her website is Fog Dog Consulting, mm. and she is a woman um, that I've worked with for years, and um, it's called Fog Dog because she helps people kind of find clarity in their moments of fog. And, um, and she would give me exercises, have me work through them. And, and she was really a, a true catalyst in helping me, you know, understand who I was and what I wanted out of this life. And, and now that I have that clarity, it's just unbelievable how quick I can make decisions. I don't mm -hmm. rest in ambiguity anymore. I know what makes me happy. I know what makes me unhappy. I know what fills up my tank. I know what makes me cry. Like 
Um, I certainly don't have all the answers and I still make tons of mistakes and have lots of highs and lows, but I know who I am as a person. And from 15 to 35 years old, I had no knowledge of, mm. you know, who I was as a human being. Wow. It sounds like you're in an amazing place in your life. And I'm wondering if there's a recent moment that comes to mind that you feel really captures all the learning and all of the growth and clarity you've had that you've been talking about. Some, some moment that feels like you living your epic life that's happened recently. Um, the, the most recent one, I do a lot of yoga and, um, I, you know, I still get stressed and I am, you know, I, I don't like walk around on clouds and, you know, it's still, I have a lot of stress, I have a lot of pressure of two young kids, marriage, house, mm. you know, all the stuff, but there, you know, I was in yoga the other day and was just kind of putting my head on the floor at the end of the practice and was just kind of overcome with, profound gratitude that I'm so happy that I found myself again after 20 years of living my life for other people. And um, I'm just very grateful because I know it could all be gone in, you know, the blink of an eye. And no matter what happens or how long I live, I am, I had a moment on the yoga mat, you know, last week where I'm just profoundly proud and, and happy that I'm living, you know, a life that is true to me and is not kind of rubbing against me. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so just kind of a, a quiet moment of gratitude. And I'm sure an hour later, the whole day went to crap over, <laughs> you know, something, but, but it was a special quiet moment. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like you, when you identified what, what success looked like in your life, it was those little moments. It wasn't these grand, sweeping, amazing, you know, awards, but it was those those quiet moments with your, your family or writing those thank you notes or having the moment of gratitude in yoga. Yeah, I, that's, that's winning, you know, yeah. for me. And I don't know, you know, what life will look like tomorrow or the next day, but um you know, I'm just proud that my insides match my outsides and I'm not living, I don't have the mask on, you know, anymore. And um, I always say about a mask, you know, if you're wearing a mask, the world might not know you're wearing a mask, but you know you're wearing the mask. Mm. And every time you lie to another human being and say, I'm fine, everything's great, you are saying to your soul, that you value what that other human being thinks of you more than you value your own truth. That you are incapable of saying, I'm having a bad day, or my husband and I aren't getting along, or my daughter's making me crazy. Um, and, and I think that's a really painful place to be. And no matter what highs and lows and ins and outs I go through, I no longer wear the mask that I wore for 20 long years, I mean, mm -hmm. 15 to 35. Um, and so it's not that I feel invincible, but I just feel like there's, there's less that can damage me and hurt me because I'm not living this facade. Yeah. Well, I, I know we're getting close to the end of the conversation. Um, before we share with anybody listening how they might find you, I, I always like through my coaching work to end with acknowledgments and identify any takeaways. So I wanted to just acknowledge you for the way in which you have really owned your authenticity and the way you talk about taking off the mask in your TED Talk, in your regular posts, in all honesty, and in this conversation today. I'm really grateful for it, and it's going to be a guiding light for me as I step into becoming more and more comfortable with myself and the, the life I'm leading right now. So thank you so much for that. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for saying that. It's um, I often forget that other people are listening or reading. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> There's someone on the other side. Yeah. I'm curious if there are any um, takeaways or moments of clarity that came for you from this conversation. 
Yeah, I mean, it's always um, a good reminder to kind of stop and look back at my old my old journey or the journey that I'm on still, I guess I should say, because, you know, I'm kind of a workhorse and I'm always looking forward and I'm always moving forward. So it's another moment of gratitude that, you know, I can kind of pat myself on the back and just remember that five years ago was a different story and we wouldn't be having this conversation and I wouldn't mm-hmm. have, you know, the story to share. And if, you know, one other human being can start to live more authentically or take off their mask or saying, you know, that they're not as happy that that is um, truly meaningful. And it's the, the sole reason that I've been so vocal about my journey because I, I didn't hear other people talking about this when I was going through it. Yeah. And I hope that it's some sort of, you know, release valve for, for other women. Well, thank you so much, Catherine. If people want to learn more about you or read your blog and follow um, Mom Complex, what's the best way for them to find you? Um, the best way is on my blog, and it's in all honesty.com. And there are all kinds of links on the site to Mom Complex website and um, just being able to sign up to receive the blog every Monday morning. Um, and I think that it's a it's a great way to feel, you know, less alone with um, with what anybody's going through. Fantastic. And I'll include links too in the notes. And I will continue to be an avid reader. So you can know when you when you send your posts out that I'll be on the other side. No, thank you. Watching them carefully. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your evening. Great. Thanks for having me, Julie. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this episode of the Mother's Quest podcast. I hope this conversation sparked something that will help you live your epic life. If you'd like to get show notes and learn more about how to join the Mother's Quest community, head over to mothersquest.com. And while you're there, I would love it if you would follow the prompts to subscribe, leave a review on iTunes, and help us spread the word. I want to end with some words to light the way on your quest. Seize the day, love your people, honor your gifts. Until next time.